not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Do not seek what you are to eat, and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service, and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third, and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Christ. Well, grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My text is the Gospel text from... Luke chapter 12. It's kind of a long text, uh, and I'm going to divide it into three sections, but I want to give some perspective on how we should understand this, this whole thing at the beginning. Forgive me if I've shared this with you before. Um, I never did that much weightlifting, except when I was in Iraq. Um, when I was in Iraq, I was in the Navy, but I was serving under an army unit, under an army command. Uh, so there were several soldiers that kind of took me under their wing and they were looking out for me and trying to make sure that I did everything right. So uh, I worked at night, I would sleep till then almost noon, and so we would get up, we would go to the gym, and we would do a workout, and then we would go have, have lunch together. So that was the first time in my life where I really strenuously worked on lifting weights every day. And I discovered something, because we would do bench pressing. And when you were bench pressing, you had to have a spotter. So as you're lifting that heavy weight up above your head like that, you need to have somebody ready to catch it or hold it in case your muscles give out so you don't drop it on your, on your neck. But I would help those guys lift those, and the, the master sergeant came over. He said, Jacqueline, don't do that. He said, you're only there to catch it if it's going to fall. He said, don't help them. Let them feel the whole weight of it, because the only way they're going to get any stronger is if they feel all that weight. You don't want to give them any help. And I learned something. Because that's the way the Bible works and operates as well. You know, one of the most important verses in the whole Bible is Romans 3, verse 20, which tells us that by works of the law shall no man be saved, but rather through the law comes knowledge of sin. That is the key. That is the, the way to understand everything we're reading in the Bible. So when we come across a passage like this in Luke chapter 12, to read these things and say, ah, I'm going to improve on that. I'm going to try to do that better in my life. 
why that's completely backwards. It's not there to help us improve. Christianity is not about becoming a better person and gradually growing more spiritual and more moral over time. Christianity is about realizing that we have failed to do these things. That these demands are so heavy, if we were to feel the full weight, they would crush us. Rather, the gospel tells us that salvation is a gift that comes from Christ. So take a look at the, if you're looking at the gospel text with me in your bulletin, take a look at verses 22 through 31. And you see a theme there. The theme is, don't worry. What you should do is seek the kingdom. If you have a pen, you might even want to underline that in verse 31. Seek the kingdom. More so than worrying about what you're supposed to eat or what you're supposed to wear. And he has the examples of the ravens and the, and the lilies. Don't worry about things. Put the kingdom first and all of that other stuff will come into order. Well, that sounds like good advice, doesn't it? But how many of us do that? How many of us actually put the kingdom first in our lives all the time? Then take a look at verses 32 through 34. This is where he lets us know that you should sell your possessions and give to the needy. Ah, not just reach in your wallet and pull out a few bucks when we have a special offering. Not just see what change you got in your ashtray when you got the homeless guy knocking on your car window. Sell your possessions. Get rid of your TV. Get rid of your car and give that stuff to somebody who, who needs it. The next time a homeless person comes and asks you if you could spare a little bit, I got an idea for you. Why don't you keep the dollar you were going to give him and sign over the deed to your house so he's not homeless anymore. <laughs> Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Why? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When you look at what someone does with their money, that's what how you can tell where their heart is. Good advice. That's great. How wonderful, generous Jesus is. But do any of us do that? None of us have given all that we have for others. And the last section, verses 35 to 40. The theme here, I think you could underline from verse 40, you also must be ready. Be ready for when the Lord comes. He uses several analogies in this section, but that's the theme for all of them. Be ready. Keep your lamps burning. In other words, uh, the image there is a servant that's ma whose master is away. Be ready so that if the servant comes in the middle of the night, you're there to open the door for him. Or if you know when somebody is going to steal something from you, you would be home. If someone's going to burglarize your house, you would be there. So that's why we're supposed to be ready. Be watchful. It's the... Uh, the Coast Guard motto, Semper Paratus, always ready. That's great, that's great advice, isn't it? I can remember uh, reading the story about the Marines because uh, there's a story about uh, some Marines on maneuvers and so they all had to dig defensive fighting positions along a ridge line, foxholes, and then each one was supposed to cover an area of, of a field of fire from their foxhole and they were in there all night. And then during the night, the staff sergeant is going around from foxhole to foxhole to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. And he finds one fellow, and he fell asleep in his foxhole. So he creeps up to it, sees them when they're sleeping, and he bangs two rocks together. He goes, bam, you're dead. And the fellow does this, and the sergeant, staff sergeant's yelling at him, you're dead. Someone could have crept up here and killed you. So now you're dead for the rest of this watch. You're a ghost. So go around and be a ghost. So the guy had to walk around from foxhole to foxhole all night going, ooh. <laughs> and you can imagine all the Marines laughing at him, right? So I can, I can readily uh, understand this illustration because we had watches in the Navy. You had to stay awake when you were on watch. But how many of you are ready? How many of you are always ready for when the Lord would come? Or might there be moments where if the Lord would come at that moment, he might catch you talking about somebody else gossiping. Or he might catch you looking at something on TV or on the internet that you shouldn't be watching. 
Or he might catch you saying words that you shouldn't have said. Are you always ready so that if the Lord comes at that particular moment, you'd be ready for him? The answer is no. None of us do all of these things. So through these demands, we see not that we should improve and become better people, but that we are in need of somebody to graciously help us, to show mercy. And that is, in fact, what the Gospel tells us. Go back to a key passage in this, in this Gospel reading. Verse 32. As soon as I realize that I don't put the kingdom first in my life, as soon as I realize that where my treasure is, there my heart is, and my heart is in the wrong place. As soon as I realize that I'm not always ready, now I have cause to be frightened, right? What will God do? But he says, fear not. Most common phrase in the Bible, isn't it wonderful? Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ah, you see, you don't acquire the kingdom by putting the kingdom for seeking the kingdom and putting it first. You don't acquire the kingdom by you putting your treasure in the right places. You don't acquire the kingdom by being ready. He gives you the kingdom as a free gift for the sake of Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for our sins. God gives us the kingdom. And what can we do then? All we do is believe. This marvelous passage from Genesis 15, 6, such a well-known passage in the scripture that Pastor Lindler read, how Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. God promises to give you the kingdom, little flock, so fear not. Believe that he will do what he said, that he will give you the kingdom, and God counts it to you as righteousness. Amen. Would you please stand now and join me in confessing what all Christians believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. us to call upon you as our Father. 
And so we do, Lord, bring to you the concerns that weigh on our hearts, especially for those who are in need of health and healing, comfort and consolation. And we want to lift up to you once again all those who were affected by the recent shootings in our country. We pray, O oh God, that at the same time as you bring to them the promises of a life that goes beyond this frail and fragile one, that so also, O oh God, you would work in the hearts of those who are wicked and evil so that they would be turned from what they intend. Grant us protection here in our land. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, all the good things of this earth are your gifts, and yet we have not always received them with thanksgiving or used them wisely. We ask that you would give us grateful hearts. We pray, Lord, that the work of the church would go forth unhindered. We ask that you would grant your judicious and providential blessing to missionaries and to Christians around the world who are engaged in sharing the gospel in difficult places. All these things we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Your and finally, as we come now to the table that Christ has prepared for us to receive his final testament, his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, so we ask that you would give us repentant hearts, that as we think over our own sin, that nothing would prevent us from coming to you, but that we would renounce sin, turn away from it, and call upon you for this great gift of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that you hear the prayers of your people and answer according to your good and gracious will, providing what is needful and beneficial to us through Jesus Christ. Amen.